uh, today I'm really excited to talk about um, how to build an IVR in 30 minutes. And uh, you'll see that the slide title here is slightly different than the title of the webinar itself, um, because we're going to do it in less than 30 minutes, uh, most likely here. There will be no code involved in the entire process, and we'll we'll even go through what dialogue flow is and does and how that works and some uh, an overview of uh, some keywords that dialogue flow has. So with that, we'll just jump in to Resemble first. So if you're uh, unaware, uh, Resemble creates uh, custom AI voices. We have a neural voice engine, which means that you give us some sort of audio data. Uh, it could be your voice, uh, it could be someone else's voice that you have permission. Um, and we really quickly build realistic uh, voice models across various languages um, that are extremely versatile. Uh, the interesting thing about our voice models are that they are extremely expressive. Um, they can handle any accent, um, and they also work at really high sharp sample rates. Um, so if you're doing anything from IVR to narrations for a video game, uh, product overview, marketing overview, it all works because of the flexibility the engine provides. So just to illustrate what that might sound like is I have a few voices here that are completely generated. So this one is, is IVR. Please hold while I connect you with an agent. This one's a digital character. I have no desire to be your friend on this quest. And, and these are all both, both of them, just the input is just text and the output is as audio. You'll see like how they how different they sound. Um, AI, AI assistant. Hmm, I'm not seeing Jerry Smith on a device. Can I get you someone else from their department? So even things like mm, and other non-English or uh, just sounds that you're making um, will we'll follow through. It works across different languages, but one of the interesting things is that we can translate between different languages. So you'll see here. Hola, esto es una prueba. Hello there, this is a test. Esto es una prueba. So she's able to switch between Spanish and English. Um, or if you're narrating something longer. This series will take to the last wildernesses and show you the planet and its wildlife as you have never seen them before. And yeah, something narration there. We also have something called Resemble Fill, which is uh, very interesting to us and a lot of our customers. Uh, the general idea is you don't want to transition from um, a complete voiceover to complete text to speech. Uh, sometimes all you really want to do is drop in synthetic bits um, into realistic speech. So a lot of the IVR uh, and IVA components kind of follow this kind of pattern where we still have 80% or 70% static conversation that's occurring, uh, but sprinkled in with dynamic elements. So you have variables like names or addresses, account balances, um, credit card information, four digits, et cetera. Um, and you just kind of want to generate those on the fly and you don't have those pre-recorded and you don't want to stitch them together either. So if you have an original sentence that sounds like this. What is your current employment status? Um, that's a real person that spoke exactly like that. And all we want to do is replace the word employment with the word marital. What is your current marital status? Or if you want to change a couple of words, say what was your last? So changing the tense and then changing the word last. What was your last employment status? So you'll notice in all three of them, um, or two of them here that we've replaced, that we've synthetically generated, it sounds just like the original and we're able to sprinkle in some synthetic bits in there um, kind of seamlessly to make it seem like, uh, to, to edit the speech and create some sort of uh, dynamicness uh, with variables. Now, the other interesting thing that I just showcased before um, dubbing between different languages is also very interesting, especially in cases where um, you are a company that serves in multiple locales or regions. Um, in some cases, you might have like restaurants, for example, um, that might be serving in French, but the, the, the name of the item is, is in English. It's fairly common. Um, so we're able to do that really easily as well. So if you might have a voice that we generate in French, Un ordinateur m'a déjà battu aux échecs, mais il n'était pas à ma hauteur au kickboxing. We could take that voice that only spoke French. Um, you know, this, she never spoke English in this data set or any other language, but we can get her to speak a different language here. Ein computer hat mich einmal beim Schach besiegt, aber beim Kickboxen war er mir nicht gewachsen. German. A computer once beat me at chess, 
but it was no match for me at kickboxing. And these are, this is really easy to do in, within the application. You kind of just write in the native language um, and in other languages, and you kind of highlight these words, click on the language tag here, and on the right side, it will show you what languages that voice speaks, and you can kind of toggle between them. So overall, it, there's a bunch of things that uh, Resemble does out of the box. We have real-time APIs. Um, we've also introduced streaming, uh, which is basically regardless of the input length that you're sending in, the time to first sound is always going to be around 300 milliseconds, uh, which is extremely exciting for conversational cases because now you can reply with a chapter of Harry Potter within 300 milliseconds. Um, and and that's, that's really cool. So I'll jump into IVR and IVA really quickly here and dialogue flow. So quick introduction. Um, IVR uh, is interactive voice response. Um, there is another keyword called IVA, which is interactive voice assistant. Um, and they're kind of used interchangeably, but IVA is really like a enhancement over IVR. So typically it's an automated system that allows transactional conversations to occur with some sort of intelligent system. Um, so you pick up the phone, call your uh, telco. Um, hopefully sometimes you have an okay experience. Sometimes it's not that great, uh, but that entire system and that conversation is, is IVR or IVA. Um, a lot of stuff happening in this space. There's a lot of different components. Um, one of them that's widely used is called Dialogflow. And Dialogflow is just an NLU engine or a natural language understanding engine. So Dialogflow basically allows you to train this model of sorts that is able to um, take in some sort of phrases or prompts that your user might say and map them to some sort of intent. So if you go and walk up to a restaurant and say, I want to order a hamburger, the intent there is to order some item um, and the item there is the hamburger. So Dialogflow basically tries to understand that, seg uh, that sentence and try to figure out what, what the intent was or is. This is used in a variety of places, mobile apps, web applications, chatbots, uh, IVR, et cetera. Anywhere where there's a conversation, you kind of need one of these NLU platforms like Dialogflow. Uh, obviously, towards the end of Dialogflow, you always have something that replies back. And hopefully that's where you've understood that's where Resemble comes in. So in 30 seconds, we're gonna get a quick intro to Dialogflow here. Um, when you log into Dialogflow, it can be quite overwhelming, but I'm going to try to just get you to understand the key components. Um, and there's only really three things you need to understand for this tutorial, intents, entities, and fulfillment. So if you jump into intents, you have this ability to create trading phrases, um, label some sort of parameters, and then have some sort of responses. So again, in this, in this particular case, it's checking some sort of balance. Um, so you load it in with training phrases, and it's able to figure out what other phrases may sound like that um, and try to map it to this intent. So the more phrases you give it, the better it gets. Entities are basically um, uh, variables or parameters. So if you have account, then you have, well, saving account, checking account, credit card. There's different kinds of accounts, but you basically create this entity of sorts. Uh, and then you have fulfillments. So fulfillments are basically uh, how does dialogue flow uh, or your agent respond to whatever query is coming in? Uh, and this is where Resemble, Resemble's magic comes in. We basically have an endpoint that we provide you, which is this, this URL right here. It's the same for everybody. You hook in your API key, you paste in your agent token, and you're good to go. And we'll explain exactly how to do this in a couple of minutes or in maybe just 30 seconds. So let's do that now. Uh, and I'll jump into uh, how this all works. So we'll first go into dialogue flow and I'll quickly just demonstrate exactly what I showed you in, uh, in the real setting. So I've created an agent here called banking. You can have many dialogue flow agents. Um, we're just going to deal with banking one for now. Um, you have intense uh, entities, fulfillment, et cetera. Uh, and we just use a pre-built agent here. So dialogue flow has a bunch of these pre-built agents that you can kind of get started with. Uh, we just took the banking one here as an example. Um, so it preloaded with a bunch of different intents. So you can check your account balance, you can open a new account, um, you can check the, the due date, uh, transfer money, et cetera. So let's go into checking a balance here and you'll see very similar to what we talked about here. Uh, you have training phrases, um, you have words that are highlighted here that indicate 
uh, what kind of parameter is being uh, asked for here. So savings maps to a particular type of account, checking, credit card, they all map to a particular type of account here. Um, now, if the user says something like, check how much money I have, well, they'll basically go ahead and say, well, I'm missing this parameter here called account. And what do I fill this in with? Um, it'll ask for these prompts, whether it's checking or savings, um, et cetera. Down here, you have responses. So you could have multiple responses here, uh, multiple variants that you can respond with. But in this case, we just have, here's your latest balance. Um, you can add more responses. And the most important thing in this tutorial is fulfillment. So there's two options here, one to enable webhook calls for this particular intent, and the other one to enable webhook calls for slot billing. So this intent just meaning like when this is said, what is the reply with? Um, for slot filling, it's basically when it's asking for what account do you want, balance which account, uh, it should also fulfill that through resemble as well. So you can go into a few others and they all look uh, about the same. So here you have transferring money. So sending two bucks, uh, two savings from checking, transfer hundred dollars or just transfer money. And you can see there's many more uh, parameters here that you can fill uh, account from, account to, and an amount. Um, and each one of them uh, will have prompts. If, if it's missing, it'll ask for um, the, the prompt here. The text response here is basically just, you're transferring something from something to something. Is that right? And then again, we have a fulfillment set up here as, as, as we expect. Awesome. So I'll jump into entities really quickly. I mean, I think we have a pretty good grasp of this. You kind of saw, saw, uh, saw this earlier in the presentation, um, but we have a uh, transfer type, whether it's credit, deposit, EFT, uh, and you create as many entities as you want. Um, and we'll hop back into fulfillment here. So again, you have this endpoint, you have this agent ID and this authorization. So the question is, well, where do you find this authorization and where do you find this agent ID? So we can really quickly jump into Resemble. So if you go into Resemble's dashboard on the top right here, um, you will see that there is API well, under your name, there's API. When you click on that, you let you see your API token out here. So you basically just want to uh, take your API token and put it inside a dialog flow um, right there. Um, and then you have agents. So the way that our integration is set up is it allows you to create many dialog flow integrations because we understand different voices might want to reply to different agents here um, or different dialog flow agents that is. So essentially we have one that's set up already. Um, it's, it maps to a voice called Deanna. Uh, it has a particular name that we gave it. Uh, and it has that agent uh, ID that we can copy over to Dialogflow so it knows how to route uh, when it hits our API. Um, you create a, real, a new one really easily. So say here we'll do like uh, an agent name, call it webinar demo. Um, we'll keep the project uh, to banking. Um, and then out of all of the voices that you build on our platform, you could pick any to fulfill that particular agent here. So in this case, we might pick someone like Tarkos um, and create fulfillment. And there you have it, it created an agent ID. So if you just copy this over to Dialogflow, um, you would just have Tarkos responding uh, instead of Deanna or uh, instead of any other voice that Dialogflow has by default. So let's get to the fun part here. Um, we'll go back into Dialogflow and we want, to, we want to see how this all comes into action, how it all kind of fits together and um, how do we actually get that agent to be real. So. Dialogflow has built-in agents or integrations. Um, so they make it really easy for you to hook into uh, a telephony system. So it uh, doesn't matter if you're using Avaya, Signal Wire, Box Implant, Twilio, Audio Codes, and there's a few more underneath. Um, there's also Dialogflow Phone Gateway. Um, and basically these are like one-click setups. So if you set up with Avaya, uh, it'll basically use your Dialogflow agent and use the fulfillment that your agent has on Dialogflow. For this case, we'll just use the phone gateway here. Uh, so I've already had this set up. All you have to, all, all the setup process is fairly simple. There's really nothing to it. It just assigns you a phone number. Uh, so in this case, I have this phone number, 727-233-5979. You can actually call that phone number yourselves. Um, but we'll use Google's voice to actually dial this number. So I'll copy it from here. I have it pasted inside of here. So you can see that's the phone number. Um, and when we make this phone call, hello. 
Hello, thanks for choosing Acme Bank. How do I open accounts? To open your account, you should come to one of our banks in person. Don't forget to bring your ID. When is the payment due? Sorry, can you tell me again? When is the payment due? The due date is next Friday. I want to transfer some money. Sure. Transfer from which account? Checking. To which account? Saving. And how much do you want to transfer? $1,000. All right. So you're transferring 1,000 USD from your checking account and checking account to a savings account. Is that right? That's right. So you can see here, it goes through an entire flow. Um, exactly what we have set up. It's able to understand and respond in that synthetic voice. That you here picked. are your deposit transactions. And it responds back pretty accurately there with whatever dialogue flow is routing. Um, it also does small talk, if you notice. Sorry, say that again. Like, sorry, say that again. Um, so it's able to do that as well. And there you have it. Um, that is in less than 30 minutes, how you can take an agent on Dialogflow, hook it up to Resemble, um, a, a synthetic voice on Resemble and get uh, kind of a real time conversation going without writing any code. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them right now in the chat or Q and A. Uh, if you have questions later on, you can always reach us at team at resemble.ai uh, or you can always go on our website and there's this annoying chat widget that pops up on your right hand side. Um, if you ask questions there as well.